Hey everyone, I hope you had a great weekend. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Today I thought it'd be fun to kick off the week with a purchase or pass video and sit down and talk to you about all of the new makeup launches. I wanted to film this video yesterday, but I was filming some different content for Instagram and TikTok and I don't know, Mondays are usually like a day that I don't really look forward to, so I thought it'd be fun to film it today because I love chatting with you guys about the new launches. Also, this morning I started to get out some of our fall decor. We don't do a ton, I just have like a couple of pumpkins and it just put me in a good mood. I'm burning a fall candle and I feel like I'm just ready for the upcoming fall season. So I do have some fall makeup launches to talk about in today's video. Let me start with the Ultra 21 Days of Beauty. I just wanted to touch on the sale and then I'll talk about a few like fall related palettes. So Ulta 21 Days of Beauty started yesterday on Sunday. I actually did a video sharing the sale, all of my recommendations. If you guys want to check it out and you're looking for just specific recommendations, I'll link that video in the description box below. But I'll also just put a link to the sale in case you want to scroll through and see what's discounted this time around. They do offer 50% off makeup and skincare each day for three weeks. And actually there are a lot of brands and products available this time around that I haven't seen in the sale previously. Sometimes the same products are on sale every year and I don't usually mind that if it is a product I love I love to be able to purchase it for a discounted price but there are some new brands and new products so it's nice to see some different options just for a change so I do recommend checking it out if you guys are looking to just shop the sale or maybe get some of your staple products for a discounted price they're also doing a lot of surprise deals this time around where they don't announce the deal until the day of the sale and one of you guys left a comment on my Ulta video saying maybe they're doing that because Sephora sometimes matches the exact deal and I thought that was really good or that was a good observation I feel like that could be true but anyway there are some deals and products that I do plan on trying so I'll be sure to share maybe a haul or just reviews on the products once I test them out let's start with some eyeshadow palettes palettes from some brands that I consider to kind of be like throwback brands like Tarte, Urban Decay, Too Faced I mean they all still make products now but when I think of those brands specifically Remember when they were launching products and they were like the top palettes to have? They're all doing palettes for fall or I guess just around this time of the year. So Tarte is releasing the Man Eater After Dark Eyeshadow Palette. It's actually available now for $52. It comes with 24 shadows. I actually think this is a gorgeous palette. I love the color story. I like the way that it looks. It just kind of looks... I don't know, a little bit different than what we normally see from Tarte. I read some comments on Instagram from people who said they went to Ulta and they swatched it and it is gorgeous. So I'm kind of curious to check it out. I don't know if I'll pick it up. I really haven't tried a Tarte eyeshadow palette in years and years. And even back in the day, they weren't really my go-to brand for eyeshadow. But I'm kind of curious to pick this one up and see what it's like. I feel like Tarte is making a little bit of a comeback. In my mind, I always group like Urban Decay, Tarte, and Too Faced together just because I feel like they were all so popular at the same time. And I feel like whereas Urban Decay and Too Faced aren't really releasing very interesting or eye-catching products these days, I feel like Tarte releases approachable products that are a little more interesting. Like they have your typical staples, but... They've evolved enough that people are kind of a little bit more curious about Tarte these days, like the Juicy Lips. It's basically a lip gloss, but it's so pretty on the lips. It's just a little bit different. So I don't know. I feel like they're kind of, you know, switching it up a little bit, which is nice while still keeping it true to like the like the typical Tarte releases. Like they still do a lot of neutrals. They still kind of lean into like the Amazonian clay line or the Shape Tape line, but their products are a little more modern compared to like Urban Decay and Too Faced. So anyway, that's just something I feel like I've noticed over the last few months. This definitely looks nice. I don't know if I'll end up picking it up, but I'm planning on stopping in Ulta this week a little bit later to pick something else up. So I think I'll probably check it out in person and see what it's like. Okay, let's talk about this palette from Urban Decay. Well, there's actually two. So this is the She-Hulk eyeshadow palette. I actually have it right here. They just sent this to me in the mail as PR. I didn't even know it was coming. I didn't even get the chance to use it. I should have used it today, but I totally forgot about it until I sat down to film. The packaging is stunning. Whoever does Urban Decay's packaging and design I'm sure it's an entire team. They do such a gorgeous job. And I think that's what always gets me about Urban Decay. Like based on the packaging, you think it's going to be such a beautiful, interesting palette. And then you open it up and, you know, depending on your personal preference, of course, it, it feels a little bit underwhelming. I think just based on the packaging alone, and that tends to happen time and time again with Urban Decay. But it has this cool screen that kind of flips. My husband just started watching this show over the weekend. I was actually editing a YouTube video in the same room, so I caught a little bit of it, but not much. But 
He said it's really good so far. Anyway, is there a price for this palette? I'll put it in the description box below because I don't see one right here. But I think if this wasn't like a She-Hulk collab and it was just named something different and it had different packaging overall, I think this palette might be a little more appealing to people. But because they market it as a She-Hulk palette and there are only like two green shadows in here, this center one and then this one right here, this one has like a little bit of green to it. It just doesn't feel like a She-Hulk palette. Again, based on the packaging, you would think there would be like a lot of green, a lot of gold, maybe like a black, some deeper browns. I think the color story is really pretty. It just doesn't really strike me as a She-Hulk palette. Because I do have it, I am going to test it out because I think the colors are pretty. And the thing about Urban Decay palettes is if you are a fan of the palette, if you love the color story or you love Urban Decay or just kind of curious about it, typically these palettes go on sale. Their products get discounted very quickly after they launch these days and especially these limited edition palettes. So even if you're interested in it right now, if you can just hold out for a few months, typically you can get them for a discounted price. So I'll be sure to try it out and review it in like a speed reviews video and let you guys know if I think it is worth trying, especially if it is discounted. But they also did like a mini She-Hulk palette, which doesn't have any green shadows in it at all. And I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me. I feel like for a collab, you think they would kind of focus on that green. And I get that they're trying to appeal to like the mainstream audience who tends to wear maybe neutral shadows overall. But for like a She-Hulk collab, I just feel like it has to have those greens, even like the darker shades and the golds that would complement the green shadows. So I do like the color story. I, I just feel like it doesn't really fit the theme. Okay, Too Faced is launching their Pumpkin Spice Second Slice Palette. So there are 18 shadows in here, a mix of mattes and shimmers. Listen, these palettes aren't for everyone. I feel like this palette or Too Faced palettes in general, or even when Urban Decay does like another naked palette, they get the same comments online every single time. People say this looks the same as everything else. Other people say they wish they would do something different. Other people are like, again, with the pumpkin themed palettes, but I mean, they do it because it sells. And I feel like if it didn't sell, they wouldn't keep doing it over and over again. So for those of us that have multiple palettes in our collection, it might not be the most exciting option for us, but there are people who love holiday palettes or love like the Too Faced pumpkin line or the chocolate line. So there are definitely people picking it up. And if you're one of those people, don't feel bad about it. Go for it. I mean, if a cute palette can bring you joy in the morning and make you excited and just put you in a better mood, I say go Go for it. Of course, I feel like there's a balance. I used to have this collector's mentality a few years ago where like if Urban Decay launched a new naked palette, I had to have it because I had all of the rest of them. And then I feel like it just the rate that brands were launching makeup sped up so quickly. And I quickly fell out of that mindset because I couldn't keep up. And I just kind of realized I didn't need to. So maybe you have the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice palette from last year. Pull that one out, do some looks, see how you feel, and then you might not feel like you really want the new one. I get why people like Too Faced palettes, these holiday launches, but I don't plan on picking this one up. So Fenty did a collab with a brand called Mischief. I'm assuming that's how you say it. It's spelled M-S-C-H-F. I could be wrong. I hadn't heard of this brand, so I Googled it, and I think it said that either like a former BuzzFeed employee or creator created this brand, and they kind of do what I would consider to be like gag gifts. I saw a few of their launches. Some of them were kind of fun. Some made sense. This one doesn't make any sense to me at all because if you gave this to someone like as a joke, I can't imagine they would actually play. Like, am I going to get ketchup on my lips today or lip gloss? And I feel like for $25, that just feels like such a waste of money. You could spend $25 and just get the Fenty gloss. I don't know about you guys. Like I like ketchup. I It's not my favorite thing ever, but if I actually like went to put lip gloss on it was ketchup, it would ruin my entire day. I feel like that sounds disgusting. I wouldn't be a fan of that. So I don't know. It seems like a strange collab. I could see a different brand doing it. Like maybe... What's that brand that's doing like a lot of food collabs right now? Is it Glam Light? I want to say Glam Light, but I can't even see Glam Light doing this. This just feels like a weird collaboration. I read a comment on Trend Mood's Instagram saying, are you sure this is fun? Because I think the caption says something about it being super fun. And I just thought that was so true. Like this just doesn't strike me as a fun collab. Maybe I'm just like not a super fun person since I'm saying that, but it's just weird. It feels like a weird waste of money. And it just seems so off brand for Fenty, right? I don't know. Anyway, enough about that. Patrick Ta is launching a new duo. So this is a 
Foundation Powder Duo. It retails for $52 and it's actually going to be available either the day this video goes up or the next day, August 30th. I've been such a fan of Patrick Ta products this year. The blush duos are so gorgeous. And then I love the lip glosses. I love the Major Dimension eyeshadow palettes. So anything the brand launches, I'm instantly kind of curious about. But I don't know that this foundation is going to be ideal for my skin type. I like the idea of a foundation and powder all in one but it's described as a creamy and blendable medium coverage cream foundation that moves with the skin. And that right there tells me it probably isn't for me because I feel like foundations that are described as like movable or they move with your skin means that they don't like dry down and stay in place. And that just sounds like a nightmare for oily skin. So I don't think I'll end up picking this up. I feel like it will break apart on me. It will settle into fine lines. It has a natural finish and then the powder has a complimentary satin finish that blurs the appearance or blurs the appearance of pores and controls shine. Controls shine. It's definitely a Monday. I can't get the words out, and every time I do get a word out, I feel like it's a combination of two words. So just bear with me. This sounds like a gorgeous product, but just not ideal for oily skin. I do like a lot of hydrating foundations, things that aren't necessarily marketed toward people with oily skin, but. I just think knowing my skin type, I probably shouldn't pick this up, especially for $52. I will still watch some reviews on it to see what people think. It does seem like the shade range leans very light toned with only a few deeper foundations, but I can't tell if that's because the powders just look really light. I think it's probably a mix. I'm sure the powders are more translucent, but even still like the cream foundations, there are a lot more light shades. So once they launch it on Sephora's website, which should be by the time this video goes live, it might be a little bit easier to see. I'll link it in the description if you guys want to check it out. So Say just launched a new lip product, which is available now at Sephora as well. It's called the Lip Blur Soft Matte Hydrating Lipstick. It's $24. There are six different shades. It's a comfortable, buildable matte lipstick, and it gives you a soft focus to full coverage look. It's supposed to be packed with nourishing ingredients to just like hydrate and smooth the lips. I've tried a few things from Say recently. I tried their concealer. I tried a mascara. I almost picked up their cream bronzer, but I'm kind of on like a bronzer no buy throughout the rest of the year just because I have been trying a lot. But I don't know. This isn't really my type of lip product right now. If I was more into matte lipsticks right now or even in the near future, I might try this because it sounds nice, but I'm just not really into matte lipsticks. I wonder if we're going to start seeing more matte lipstick formulas because for a while it's just been like all about the glossy lips and I feel like whenever that happens it's only a matter of time until things swing the other way and we start seeing the complete opposite and it's been a while since brands were really into matte lipstick launches so I kind of wonder if this is going to become popular just like the soft matte blurred lip focus type product. I wouldn't doubt it. I feel like a lot of brands have been releasing things like this lately. So I feel like we're going to see that even more as we head into the winter season, which I, I will not be picking them up. I'm still into glossy lips. I'm not giving them up. Okay, here's a sneak peek of a new Charlotte Tilbury palette. It's the Beautifying Face palette. There's not a release date or price info yet, but it looks gorgeous. The shades are so stunning. This is a palette that I would definitely be interested in trying, depending on the price point. I feel like it could probably be pretty expensive. I don't know if it's a holiday launch or not. I feel like it probably is. And I do think her holiday palettes tend to be pretty pricey. So it will be nice to see additional photos, but for now, here's a sneak peek. I do think it looks really pretty. Charlotte Tilbury also launched a new concealer called the Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. It's available now for $33. It is a medium buildable coverage concealer. It's supposed to be radiant, hydrating, pore refining, and be 16 hour wear. It sounds really nice, but I do feel like I've purchased enough concealers for 2022. Kind of like how I was feeling with cream bronzers, which is why I didn't purchase the one from Say. I just placed a Sephora order. Again, that haul video should be up soon, and I got one from Item Beauty, which I am wearing today. It went on really nicely, but I think I'm going to push pause on concealers and just put myself on a concealer no-buy for the rest of the year as well, just because I've had really good luck with concealers this year. So when I open up my everyday makeup drawer, there are like four different concealers that I love, and honestly, I could use any one of them and be completely content. So to me... That means I just don't really need to keep running out and purchasing new ones and trying new formulas. So I'll probably just not buy any additional concealers for now. It sounds nice, but you know, it doesn't really sound like something I have to have. Again, similar to Patrick Ta, it feels like it leans 
pretty light, especially based on this photo for sure. Actually, there's one more concealer from Milk Makeup. This is the Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer. It's a multi-use medium to full coverage concealer that covers, sculpts, and hydrates for a lightweight, crease-proof, natural finish. Which again, sounds really, really nice. I feel like a lot of concealer descriptions have been pulling me in. And I do have fine lines under my eyes. I've had those for a long time. I want to say since I was a teenager, but as I get older and I feel like I don't get a lot of sleep these days, they're just even more pronounced. So typically I do like to find something that... You know, all concealers end up creasing if you have fine lines, but there are some that are definitely worse than others, and some have like a little bit of a smoothing property to them. So that's why I've been trying out a lot of formulas lately, and I feel like this item beauty one looks nice so far. I'm also really into the Catrice concealer right now. That's probably like my go-to for daily wear, or honestly, some days I just skip it completely and just take my foundation up a little bit higher because I don't really have dark circles. I feel like that's not a major concern for me. It's more so just kind of highlighting my face and maybe covering up a little bit of redness because I do have allergies. So I don't know, some days I just kind of skip it and just go in with my foundation brush and like lightly go over that area too, and that works well. This is a really cute collection from Sigma. It's a collab with Disney and it's Alice in Wonderland themed. There's actually this really cute show on Disney Plus called Alice's Wonderland Bakery. And I watched it a few times with Tavy and it is so cute. It's like Alice's granddaughter or her great granddaughter. And she has like this little magical kitchen and these friends and she's always baking something. And I just love it. One thing about having a kid is now I feel like we know about kids shows and kids movies, which is funny because for a long time, I didn't know anything about them. And I mean, we have nieces and nephews. So like occasionally we would catch things, but not enough to know like what the popular shows were and I just think it's kind of fun because for years we didn't really watch like any animated movies or animated shows occasionally we would watch like a new Disney movie or a new Pixar movie but very rarely and now like in the last few months we've watched like the Toy Story movies again and Cars and like a couple of the newer ones and I just love it I think they're so cute not that you have to have kids to watch those types of things I just feel like for us it wasn't on our radar and now it is and I love it like I'll just watch it voluntarily even when he's not around so this collection comes with an eyeshadow palette for $59 the palette is really pretty I like the mix of colorful tones I don't know. I think it's fun how they have like the logo stamped into the shadows. There's a cheek duo for 35. It looks like one shade is a highlighter, the other is a blush. There's a five piece makeup brush set for $120. That seems high. There's also a lip duo that comes with a new hydrating lip cream formula for 35, or you can get the full collection for 199. Okay, I'm not super familiar with Sigma these days, but those prices seem kind of high. Maybe because it's a Disney collab. I don't know. I did just recently get some of their products in the mail as PR, so I want to test them out on camera and see if they're actually worth the hype they get on YouTube. I feel like everyone is always talking about different Sigma products, and I don't know if I've have I ever tried their makeup? I don't know if I have. I've tried some of their brushes in the past and I do think their brushes are really, really good. So I wanna do a video actually testing the products out on camera to see what they're like. I don't plan on picking up this collection, but I do think it's cute. It just seems a little bit expensive. ColourPop launched a High School Musical collection, which is super cute. I was a big High School Musical fan back in the day. I'm pretty sure I went with my friends to go see the third one in theaters. But it's so fun because my nieces just discovered High School Musical. They're four and five. They're almost five and six. And they love it. We were watching them last week and they had the movie on and I just thought it was so cute. So I love the ColourPop nostalgic collabs. I just feel like they remind me of childhood. Typically, if I know what the products are or like the show or the movie is when they collaborate with them, I don't always know. So anyway, there's an eyeshadow palette, three blushes. Oh, they did just the tint lip balms, which I feel like it's been forever since I've seen them launch new ones. I used to love that formula so much. There's also a cream gel liner set, and I think that's it. It's a cute collection for sure. The colors are not super unique, but I feel like that's not always why you buy these types of collabs. You buy them because... You're a fan of like whoever they're collaborating with. And of course, you know, the colors and products play a part in it. But I do think the colors make sense for the collab. So what do you think? Are you a fan? Did you purchase anything? I feel like my nieces would love this collection. They don't wear makeup. They wear it like for fun. But since they're really into High School Musical right now, I feel like they would love those. Maybe like the Just a Tint lip balm. So if you were a High School Musical fan, 
What was your favorite movie? Mine was the second. I feel like the second movie is the best one. ColourPop also launched hair products, which I think is really fun. And I hope they do even more because they keep things affordable. So I like the idea of them expanding into hair care. So this is the main event collection. There are two products. The main event hair tints are $14 each. And these are designed to add vibrant color to the hair with a ready-to-use semi-permanent formula. So they recommend using these for 30 to 45 minutes. I think obviously if you have lighter hair, they're going to, you know, appear a lot more vibrant. If you have hair similar to mine, they probably won't show up. I did get a couple of these in the mail as PR. There's like, there's one called Chestnut, which is like a bright, vibrant red that I kind of want to use because I feel like I do have a little bit of red in my hair. So I wonder if it would just kind of bring that out a little more. But because my hair is so dark, I don't know that it would be great. I might try it because I have it and then I'll keep you posted. But there's also the main event coloring conditioners for $16 each. And these are meant to extend color vibrancy for additional washes. So these are best for semi-permanent color maintenance or for a more pastel soft color payoff. I don't know. I just don't think these will really work on my dark hair, especially the bright shades. And they didn't really do like a lot of like typical hair colors, like brown or blonde. They did like really bright, vibrant ones. I still love glaze. One of you guys asked me if I used that the other day, if I still use it, and I do. I just used it like two weeks ago. Glaze does color conditioning glosses, but they do more like typical hair colors. Like ColourPop did really fun, vibrant colors like pink and purple and peach and blue. But Glaze does like brown and red and blonde and they have like a clear as well. So I do still use Glaze. I use it like every three weeks, I want to say. The results last for a while. So it just kind of depends on how much you wash your hair. Like if I'm washing my hair a lot and I notice that my hair needs a refresh, I might use it more often. Or if I don't wash it as often, I feel like I can stretch it. But anyway, I do think this is a fun idea, especially if you have lighter hair, you like pastels or vibrant shades. It could be a fun way to switch it up. They did upload on their Instagram story like swatches on different colored hair. I didn't really look at it too deeply, but maybe take a look at those photos before ordering if you aren't sure if it will work on your hair color. But now that they've expanded into hair products, I would love to see more like shampoos and conditioners and deep conditioners and detanglers and all kinds of things. I just want to check Instagram to see if I missed anything. Oh, it looks like who made this? Oh, I thought it was a Pat McGrath palette at first. This is a Danessa Myricks palette. So I just saw this on Instagram. It's the new Lightwork Volume 4 Transcendence palette from Danessa Myricks. It's an all-over face multi-use palette with 14 color-shifting chromatic shades in multiple transcending luxe finishes. That sounds, that sounds intense. There's a video on Trend Mood's Instagram with swatches. Wow, those are gorgeous. They're super intense. I don't know, like Danessa Myricks makes beautiful eyeshadows and I wanted to try them for a little while, but they're so expensive. So this palette is $125. It's going to be available on September 13th. The thing about me is I, you know, I like colorful eyeshadow. I do. I just don't wear it as often these days. I'll usually wear it once a week and sometimes a little more, but I just feel like you know, colorful eyeshadow, I have no issues wearing it out in public. I think it is so fun, but typically it just takes me a little longer to create a colorful eyeshadow look because sometimes colorful eyeshadows can be a little bit harder to work with, but these swatches are gorgeous. I don't think I'll buy it. That's just a little bit too much. I don't know how much use I, how much use I would get out of it practically, but it's so pretty. I feel like it's just something I have to admire from afar and sometimes that's okay. I feel like Danessa Myricks makes gorgeous eyeshadow palettes. Like sometimes when you see the shades in the palette, they don't necessarily look like anything super special. Like they look really pretty, but when you swatch them or when you see the swatches, they are so gorgeous. So one of these days I'll try something. I just don't need like a full intense face palette because I know I won't use it enough to justify the price point. Last thing, REM Beauty did announce some new products, just kind of basics. There is a Space Shape Brow Pencil for $18, and then also a Space Shape Brow Gel for $20, and then some multi-use shadow sticks for $18. I won't say that I'll never try REM Beauty. If there's a product that really catches my eye, I might try it. I will say, I was at Ulta the other day, and I was looking at the products in person, and I've always thought the packaging looked really, really cheap, but in person, it feels Feels nicer than it looks. It doesn't necessarily feel like super luxe or anything like that, but I, I 
think in my mind, I thought when I picked it up, it was going to feel like $3 packaging, but it doesn't. It definitely feels nicer. It looks nicer. There are some products that if I was just like browsing and I saw them in person, I might be kind of curious about, but I feel like because I've heard so many mixed opinions and reviews on the brand, I don't know. Overall, it just doesn't really pull me in. Okay, guys, that is everything that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being here. I feel like I went on a few tangents. I was a little bit rambly. I don't know. It's like a true Monday today. Like I can't get my brain on track. I was a little bit distracted this morning. My husband got the fall decorations out and I was kind of going through them and I was putting them out a little bit and I just feel like I, it, I don't know. It's Monday. My brain is just not fully ready for the week yet. So I will get there, but I hope you guys have a great day. I have a haul video coming your way this week. I also have an empties video coming and then maybe something else. If there's something you guys want to see, let me know. I'll definitely film it and I will see you guys very soon with a new one. Bye.